Hello everyone, welcome to Vap Fashion's YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be teaching us how to make this beautiful twisted waist gown with front slit and without a side seam. Yes, you heard me right. This gown does not have a side seam. And the sleeve is a turn up sleeve. You can see, and this is what it looks like at the back. I hope this is something you are interested in learning. Kindly stay tuned while we get right into the video. I'll be making use of this fabric for this project. And here I have two pieces. So this is actually a leftover fabric I'm using for this project. And I placed the fabric so that the savage can face each other. So let me use this paper to describe to us. This is the savage and this is the savage at the down part. You just go ahead and fold it into two like this. By folding into two now, you have the width of your fabric. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and slash the middle here. So this is how you can now achieve the two pieces of your fabric. Can you see? So this is now two pieces. One will serve as the left side and the other will serve as the right side because we do not have a side seam on this outfit so that's how i achieved my two pieces i have here even though i said i'm making use of a leftover fabric so even if you have your same fabric and you want to do this this is how you should divide your fabric into two make sure that the salvage are facing each other and then cut at the mid point that's fold your fabric using the length to achieve the weight and then cut at the midpoint that way you have two pieces so having said that you want to make sure that the width of your fabric is going to be enough to accommodate your biggest measurement now this is what i mean my hip is 48 inches 48 divided by two i'm not dividing by four this time 48 divided by two that will give me 24 inches so plus two inches I need a seam allowance at the center front and I also need a zip allowance at the center back. So that's plus 2 inches. So 40, um, 24 plus 2, that will give me 26 inches. So that's how I came about my 26 inches. For this fabric, I do not need ease because it's a little stretchy. So I don't need to add ease to this. So if you're working with a fabric that does not, that does not stretch, please make sure to add your ease okay one or two inches is fine and here the length i have is 63 inches my actual length is 60 inches plus two inches for my hemming allowance then plus one inch for the shoulder slant so that's how i got my 63 inches okay so the next thing i'm going to do now is to fold over the black part to meet the other open side so the black part is going to be the center front and the other part that is down will be my center back. Then this automatically means that the other side is on fold. That's the black part now is the center front and as well as the center back. I hope you understand. So now the next thing I'm going to do is to mark one inch from the open side. The one inch which is for my zip allowance at the back and then also the center front seam allowance which is also going to give me my slit allowance so i'm going to mark one inch from this center front so i'm going to mark this line and rule it down okay so having done that now this line is now my center front line that's where all my measurements will start from so that part is our zip allowance and as well as the center front seam allowance. So next I went ahead to mark the shoulder line. So on this shoulder line, I'm marking three inches. And then at the side here, I'm going to come down by 1.5 inches. This is to create my shoulder slant. This is, I came down by 1.5 inches at the folded part of the fabric. I'm going to use my straight ruler to slant it to meet these 3 inches. I used 1.5 because this is wider than my normal shoulder measurement. So that's 1.5. So 
at that point where i have my 1.5 that's at the side at the folded side i'll come in by two inches and then i'll go ahead and enter my armhole measurement my armhole is eight inches so i'm going to mark eight inches let me repeat myself at the side the folded side i came in by two inches and then i went ahead to mark my armhole measurement down by eight inches so you can see i'm going ahead to connect my line so next i'll go ahead and get the midpoint of the armhole line and then i'll go in by half of an inch this is for both front and back so going by half of an inch i'll slant it to meet the shoulder tip like this and then I'll go ahead and curve it to meet the armhole. That's the armhole line there. So that's that. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to mark the neck line. So for the back neck depth, I'm going to be using a neck depth of 1.5 inches. And then a width of 3.5 inches. I'm going to bring in my armhole curve and connect it just like this. And then I'm going to be using a neck depth of 6.5 for the front. So I'm marking both front and back neckline. I'm going to mark a neck depth of 6.5 inches. And then of course the neck width is going to be the same 3.5. I want this to be a slight V-shaped neckline. So this is why I'm placing my curved ruler like this. That's my armhole curve like this. So have a slight V shape. So basically, this is all for the measurement here. So I'm just going to go ahead now and cut it out. So I'll be cutting on the back neckline first. Then I'll separate the front from the back before we cut the front neckline. So now this is our back neckline here. So on this shoulder line, I'll go up by half of an inch. This is for joining the shoulder of both front and back together. So I'll just go up by half of an inch here. Can you see? So I didn't cut on the actual shoulder slant. So this is half inch for joining front and back together. Then I'll go ahead and cut the armhole like this. Can you see? So now... Having done that, I'm going to separate the front from the back. Remember that they are joined together now at this side. So I'm just going to open it up like this. Can you see? Our armhole are facing each other this way. Can you see what we have here? So I'll go ahead now and cut out this part. So you can see the one inch I added here. I see I'm not cutting. The V-neck is not connecting to that part because this is for my center joining and the seam, the slit allowance. So I'm going to cut this straight like this, and then I'll go ahead and cut the V neckline this way. Can you see that? So that's that. So now the next thing we want to do now, to achieve the twisted waistline, I want to have that gathering, that twisted effect on the waistline. So now from the shoulder line here, this is the toughest part of the shoulder. And you see, this is happening for joining the front and back. So from this part here, that's minus the half inch, I'm going to come down and mark my waistline. And my waistline is 17 inches. So here, I have my 17 inches. So I'm just going to open up my fabric properly like this. So now that we have our 17 inches, this part is the waistline. So remember that my fabric is opened into two now. So I'm going to divide my waist measurement by two. So my waist is 34 inches. When you divide 34 by two, that will give us 17 inches. So I'm going to come here and mark 17 inches. So can you see? So this is 17 inches. So after this 17 inches, this is what I have left here. I have 8.5. I remember that one inch is for a zip allowance. So automatically I have 7.5 inches left. Okay. So this 7.5 inches is what I'm going to use to achieve the twisted effect that I will have here at the center front. I hope we get that. Take note that the hip measurement is what I use to determine the amount of fabric because my hip is the biggest measurement. If your bust is the biggest measurement, please use the bust to determine the amount of fabric to work with. 
So now that 7.5, I'm going to mark that 7.5 from this center front here. So this is where my 7.5 stops. That's on the waistline here. And you see, this is my 7.5 at this point. So now this is what I'm going to do. On this waistline of 17 inches, I'm going to slash this line open up until this point. So I'll bring in my straight ruler and draw a straight line. We want to make sure that this line is straight. This line is on the waistline. So can you see? So now I'm going to slash this line to this point and stop here. So now I'll come from this side and begin to cut like this. Anything? And then I'll stop here at this point and see what I have now. Okay, I've gone ahead to cut my front and back facing. I cut the front facing on fold. Can you see? This is what I have. This is my front facing. I cut it on fold. This is because I would have stitched the center front already together before I sew my facing to the neckline. So this is what I have. You can see the facing is away from the center front. I also did the same thing for the back, but the back I cut two pieces because the back is separated. That's where we're going to have a zip allowance. So I didn't cut the back on fold so this is the facing for the back i'll place it so that we can see what we have can you see i have two pieces so this is what my facing looks like at the back and then i also went ahead to cut my basic sleeve it's just a basic sleeve so if you don't know how to draft a basic sleeve i'll be dropping the link in the description box so that you can learn how to draft a basic sleeve so here is my basic sleeve and then i also went ahead to cut the black fabric that's the black part of my fabric i'll be using it to achieve the turn up at the base of the sleeve and that fabric is six inches in length and in width is the width of the base of the sleeve okay so i'm going to show the fabric i'll be using for the turn up this is the second sleeve so I'll bring in the fabric I'll be using for the turn off, and this is what I have here. I cut on fold. On fold, it is three inches. So when you open it up, of course, three inches will now give you six inches. And I have two pieces. I'm going to be stitching to the base of my sleeve, and then to achieve the turn up. So right now we're done with the cutting part. It's now time for us to sew. I'm going to start with the front piece. Okay, to stitch the front pieces together, I'm going to place them right side facing right side. And then I'll start stitching from the neckline, that's from the neck depth. I'll stitch and stop 20 inches away from the hem. That's from the hem, I'm going to leave 20 inches and then stitch from the neckline and stop at that 20 inches. That's 20 inches before the hem line. That's what I mean. I want to have a slit of 18 inches. Remember, I already said my hemming allowance is 2 inches. So, 2 inches is my hemming allowance. And I said I'm stopping 20 inches away from the hem. So, that means 2 inches is for my hemming allowance. And then 18 inches is for the actual slit. Can you see? So, I'm just going to mark 20 inches from the hem. So, this is the point where my stitch will stop. I'll start stitching from the neckline and stop at that point. For me to achieve the slit at the down part after doing that i'll now go ahead and fix my front facing so i'm done with joining the center front as you can see i went ahead to press it open and i've sewn my facing you can see that i've notched all the curved points so this is what i have and i've gone ahead to press it can you see so now the next thing I'm going to do now is to create the twist on the waistline. So to create the twist on the waistline, I'm going to turn it to the right side so that it's clearer this way. So this is our center front here. So I'm going to create gathers. So I'm just going to gather it this way. Can you see? 
just going to hold it this way like this and then I'll pin can you see so I'll pin this point so I'm also going to repeat the same thing this way just going to gather it also like this can you see and then I will also pin after creating my gathers here now. So now to twist it, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to twist this like this. This is this side now. I'm going to take it to the back like this. Can you see? So I haven't done it once. Can you see what I have? So now you can see that this is the wrong side. So you want to return this one back to its previous state and return the other one back to its own previous shape. So I'm going to flip it now like this. So you can see that this shoulder has come back to where it's supposed to be and this is, has come back to where it's supposed to be. So all you need to do is to just twist it twice. Okay? So I haven't twisted it twice now. I'm going to go ahead and pin this way. Can you see? So you want to hold this very firm here. So I'm going to form here like this. And pin. So you want to make sure that when you are sewing, you sew very, very close to the knotted area. That's to the twisted area. I'm going to stitch like this to this point. I'll be stitching on half of an inch. I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. I'm going to also hold them together like this on the waistline. And then you can see I'm going to stitch and make sure I stop here. So you don't want to leave space in between the twisted area and the main fabric. So you want to make sure that you are pulling this a little so that you come really close. This will help the twist to be very firm and it will not be loosened around the center front. Do you see how I just pinned that point? So I'll take this to my sewing machine and stitch it on half inch this way. Repeat the same thing on the other side and bring it and show us. All right, I'm done stitching the waistline. And see, I went ahead to also weave it. I made sure to stitch really close to the twisted area so that the twist is as firm as possible. I repeated the same thing on the other side. And this is what I have. Let me turn it to the right side so that we can see. And you see what it looks like on the right side. It's already coming out really beautiful. Can you see? So the next thing I'm going to do now is to eliminate zipper bulge from the center back. So I'm going to place the right side of the back facing the right side. I'm going to make sure to align the waistline, the part where I have the cut or where I have the joining. So make sure to align it. You don't want one up or down. Please make sure that you align it. So that is why it's very advisable that if you're sewing in a seam allowance of half inch, maintain your seam allowance. Don't sew on quarter inch on this side and then sew on half inch on the other side. I hope you understand. So from this waistline, I'm going to go in by half of an inch to take out my zipper bulge. So I'll go in by half of an inch and then I'm going to bring in my straight ruler. I'm going to slant this to the midpoint of the armhole. You can do this to the chest line, you can do it to the midpoint of the armhole, you can do it to the neckline. This depends on what you want to achieve and then the kind of fabric you are working with. Okay, so now I've slanted my zipper bulge. I'm going to also slant it downwards so this is to eliminate zipper bolt all the way down okay so take note that i'm placing my tape from minus 17 that's where my waistline is so i'll get two inches above the hip line and then slant it this way this is just the regular way we usually take out our zipper bolt okay so i'm going to bring in my scissors and cut out this part I'll cut it out and throw it away. 
So I'm going to refortify my stitch there because by taking out this zipper bolt, I have I have cut out where I fortified where I back stitch. So I'm just going to make sure that I stitch it well so that it doesn't lose. So can you see what the back looks like now? Okay, so it's inward at that point so that our zipper will not bulge. Okay. So now I'm going to come down by the space I'm going to use for the zipper. My zipper is 24 inches. I'm going to be fixing my zip from the neckline and I'll stop one inch or I'll stop one inch above the hip line. That's what I'll do. I'll stop one inch above the hip line. So this is my zipper. You can see I'm just going to mark where my zipper will stop. So I'm going one inch above the hip line which is also above the end that's the head of the zipper okay so that's it so from this part i'm going to stitch all the way down on that one inch i added for my zip allowance at the center back so from the part where i marked i'm going to stitch on one inch all the way down to the hem line and then i'll go ahead and fix my zipper and turn the back facing and come back and show us the next thing to do. So I'm done fixing the zipper and this is what we have. So you want to make sure that the waistline is well aligned because that's where we have our cut. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to sew the back facing. So I'm going to place the facing like this. Can you see? Right side of the facing facing the right side of the fabric. So I'm just going to trim out this part so that it's well with it. So I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and stitch on half inch this way. You can see now that my facing will neatly close up the part where I have the zip allowance. So I'll stitch it this way. And then I'll also stitch this part where I have my zip allowance. You want to make sure that you cover the zipper cloth from this side. I'll do it that way. But before I do that, I'm going to weave the down part of my facing. Then I'll stitch this way and also stitch this way. So I'll repeat the same thing for the other side. So I'm done fixing my back facing. And this is what we have. So can you see? This is what it looks like. Very neat. And I went ahead to weave it. So now the next thing I'm going to do now is to fix the sleeve. Can you see? So the next thing I want to do now is to fix the sleeve. So this is my basic sleeve. Can you see? This is my basic sleeve. For this one, I fixed the, the fabric we'll be using for our turn up. So now this is what we're supposed to do. This is the basic sleeve here. I'll place it right on the wrong side now. And then I'll go ahead and place the fabric for the turn up like this. I'm going to place it right side now, facing wrong side. And then I'll stitch on half of an inch, which is what I have done here already. Can you see? I placed it on the wrong side and I stitched on half of an inch. So now the next thing I'm going to do now is to flip the sleeve like this over this way so that I can have my turn up on the right side here. And then I'll flip it. So I flipped it this way. You want to make sure that some part of the turn up is showing here. You don't want to just fold it exactly like this. So I'm going to make it in such a way that like half of an inch of the fabric for the turn up is showing here at this side. Can you see? And then I'm going to press it down. going to press it down like this so now this is what I have here on the right side so now the next thing now to do is to stitch this part this hem when you stitch this so you will now have this intact like this and then this place will be dropping like this and you see I'm going to just stitch on this part like this so you want to make sure that as you are stitching you hide your seam allowance that's this seam line make sure that it's inside so and you can see that i've gone ahead to reduce the seam allowance so that it's easy to hide everything inside so i'll just come up by one inch and stitch here or three quarter of an inch and stitch it from here to here so this part of the sleeve will just be the part that will be open so i'll repeat the same thing for the other side then i'll go ahead and shape 
this sleeve to the armhole measurement. Remember I said my armhole is 8 inches, okay? So I'm going to shape it to the armhole measurement I have here. So whatever it is I have on the armhole here, take note that we do not have any side seam. So I have to close up this sleeve so that it fits into this measurement and then I'll fix it using the setting method and show us the final outcome. This is our twisted waist gown. I had to go ahead and lose it because I'll be doing a little alteration. This is our center back. You can see my zipper here and see it. So I had to lose the center back. That's the waistline. This is because I'm having a bulge at the back. Remember, I always say that our front length and our back length are not the same. For my front length, it is 17 inches, while my back length is 15. Remember, I just used exactly the half length for both on the front and the back. So this is what is making my gown bulge at the back. So the difference between my front and back is 2 inches. So that difference is what is causing that bulge. I will need to take care of that bulge so that my gown can sit well at the back. And then again, my fabric is stretchy. Can you see? My fabric is stretching vertically and also stretching horizontally. Okay? So that way, you need to take care of all these problems so that the gown can really sit well at the back. So now I'm going to go ahead and take out the difference of that two inches. Ordinarily, I would have taken out 1.5 and then used half inch to stitch it back. So that would still bring me to the two inches. But in this case, I'm taking out two inches. This is because my fabric is even a, it's a stretchy fabric. So that is why I'm going to go ahead and take out two inches instead of taking out 1.5 and using the remaining half inch for my seam allowance. So here I'm going to take out my two inches because a fabric that is stretchy will bulge more compared to a fabric that is not stretchy. I hope that is clear. So right now from the center back here, I'm going to go in by quarter of my waist measurement. Quarter of my waist measurement is 8.5. And this is where it ends. That's after my zip allowance of one inch, so 8.5, that will be 9.5. My zip allowance is one inch, so 8.5 inwards, right? So that's a total of 9.5. So I'll mark at this 9.5 mark here. And then here at the center back, I'm going to go up by two inches. Like I said, if your fabric is not very stretchy, just taking out 1.5 is fine. Remember, we did add half inch seam allowance on the waistline. So taking out 1.5, so by the time you stitch with half inch together, that will be your two inches in all. So I'll go ahead and use my straight ruler to connect it this way. Can you see? So, can see? So, I'll go ahead and cut it out like this. I want to place it correctly. I'm going to cut it out this way. This is me eliminating zipper bulge from my back, okay? So, can you see? So, then I'm going to go ahead and stitch them back like this. So by stitching it back like this, so you know, it will allow this stretch and then there will be no gathering at the waistline. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch back on half inch, repeat the same thing here, half inch, and then I'll go ahead and fix my zipper properly and wait for us to see. So here we are. This is what my gown looks like at the back. Can you see I have completely eliminated any form of zipper bulge? my gown is sitting really pretty and this is what it looks like on the front and you see everything came out so so well i enjoyed making this gown and i love the outcome i hope you enjoyed watching it and you learned something if you did please like this video share this video with your friends make sure to hit on the subscribe button to subscribe and also put on your notification bell so you get notified once i post a new video Thank you so much for watching. See you in my next video. Bye and stay safe.